Okay, in this video I'd like to continue on my tutorials in quantum statistics. This is video number 51 and it's video number 9 in a series of sub-videos on the applications of quantum statistics. I'd like to draw your attention to my website universityphysicstutorials.com. So in this video I'm going to discuss the photon flux or which is also known as the irradiance. Okay, I might also call it the intensity. Okay, so if you're doing optics, this is definitely something you want to know about. If you're doing lasers or anything like that, you need to know all about the irradiance. So the videos you need to look at in order to understand this are as follows. Number 50, I discussed the steradian or the solid angle. I also um, I also spoke about the polar or spherical coordinates in video 50, or well, I actually used them, which I derived in a previous video. Number 45, I talked about the photon energy density, and I'll do a recap of that in a moment. And finally, in video number 44, I derived the Planck distribution. So the photon energy density. Let's do a quick recap on this, because I think this is important. In video number 45, I showed three, or you derived three different ways of writing the electromagnetic energy density. You must integrate the electromagnetic energy density in order to calculate the total energy. So the first thing I showed was this U of E. Now, by the way, an, uh, another way of writing it would be U sub E. That's another way some people write it, U of nu and U of lambda in a moment. Some people write it like that. So, either way, what, what does it mean? It means, in this case, it means the energy density per unit energy interval. This means the energy density per unit frequency interval. This means the energy density per unit wavelength interval. Why do we do it that way? Well, it's, it's mainly because of the integral that we think about that way, because the integral already comes to us in that particular form. All right? The, the way to get, like, for example, if you, if you integrate this function or to get the total energy, you must multiply by dE, which gets rid of the per uh, form of it. You must multiply by d nu, which gets rid of the per unit frequency interval. You multiply by d lambda, which gets rid of the per unit frequency interval component. But we like to, we for that reason we look at energy density per unit of something. Look at the units here. The units of this would be energy density is joules per meter cubed. Full stop. However, when you add in this per unit unit something else, you get joules per meter cubed per joule or per meter cubed. A bit of a strange energy unit you think for uh, energy density. Energy density per unit freq frequency interval. Well, joules per meter cubed is energy density per unit frequency interval, which is the same as joules per meter cubed second. Finally, the energy density per unit wavelength interval is joules per meter cubed, which is the energy density per unit wavelength or per meter. Okay, so this is important. You need to be comfortable w with uh, manipulating these, uh, these units because to be honest, I found it quite difficult and I remember struggling in uh, some courses I did in university, in particular op optoelectronics. Uh, because I found it difficult to come to terms with these particular units and manipulating them uh, quickly. So I suppose the main thing to understand is the reason we think about per unit something, whatever it is, is because it comes to us in that form in the integral. And when we multiply by the frequency interval, it, it, we, we, the, these extra strange units like this disappear and we just get joules per meter cubed. Okay, it's time to work out the irradiance. So what is the irradiance? Well, what are the units on irradiance? If you were talking about classical physics, you talk about intensity, okay, which is equal to watts per meter cubed. Or, sorry, uh, it's watts per meter squared. Just let me confirm that. Yeah, it's going to be watts per meter squared. Uh, that's what we usually think about for the intensity, watts oh. per meter squared. So it's the, it's the power moving through, a, it's a, it's through an area sort of thing. All right, watts per meter squared. That's the uh, intensity. But when we're talking about optics, for some reason we like to use the word irradiance. I'm actually not too sure why we do that, but we do. So we talk about watts per meter squared is the irradiance. So we need to think about this in English. How do you calculate the watts per meter squared? What does it mean? Well, one way of thinking about it is the amount of photons passing through your, your, your area, okay, per second, because they carry energy. So, okay, that's one way of thinking about it. Um, another way is just thinking about the flow of energy. So, you think about the photon flux or the irradiance. Either way, we will be able to come up with a formula. Now, first of all, so it's, it's not that easy to, well, I suppose it is it's perhaps a bit intuitive to come up with it. So, the way I'm going to start about it is first is to think about what do we need in order to calculate the photon flux. Well, let's say we have, I don't know, let's say we have photons moving like this. 
and they're going through my area here. Let's say that this is my area. I know I've drawn up, actually I won't draw volume, I'll just draw it as, just, uh, that's my area. So we need to work out how many photons are going through that, and it's always per second. We, we love thinking about per second, we don't think about anything else. So, well, first of all, you're going to need to, you need to work out as well, what's the energy of a photon? So you're going to need the energy density. Let's say we use the energy density per unit frequency interval. Next, when the photons strike, they don't strike at a, they don't strike usually normal. So we need to find out what, how much of the photon's energy is actually going in. So we have to use a cosine term, usually, usually cosine theta, which gives us the normal component or the perpendicular component of the uh, incident radiant, uh, incident light. Next, we need to think about the amount of area which is is uh, is is being, we'll say, incident. Okay, so this is where we use the concept of the steradian. So we say that in total, if we if we're talking about a sphere, we usually talk about spheres. The total um, the total solid angle is four pi. So we're talking about a fractional solid, solid angle. So it's da over four pi, which is our uh, solid, uh, which is going to be our um, is is our solid angle. This is a fractional solid angle because if we're talking about a sphere, the total solid angle is four pi. So we want to get the fraction of this. So we talk about da over four pi, the fractional solid angle. Okay. So so far, putting all of those together, we can think of the uh, we can think of our formula for irradiance. We'll say is approximately. It's going to be the energy density, let's say per unit frequency interval. It's going to have a cosine theta term to get out the normal component, and it's going to have the fractional solid angle, which we're going to have to integrate. If, uh, we're going to have to integrate across the whole thing. I'm going to tell you that we also need a factor of the speed of light. Okay, and once you have this factor of the speed of light, we have it correct. You might wonder, well, why? Surely that makes no sense. Well, think about it. Let's say we have energy density per unit, uh, energy density per unit frequency interval. We want to go to irradiance per unit frequency interval. All right. So we need to uh, we need to look at the units here. So let's look at it. So we have joules per meter cubed, which is energy density per unit frequency interval. So we multiply by a second. Now we need to work out what's our watts per meter squared. So we have, we do it as follows. You just, if you think about this, you'll see that in fact this is the way to do it. Now look, it takes a small bit of manipulation of the, the units, but this is correct. So if you, if you write it this way, we're going to get watts per meter squared, which is our, our irradiance or our intensity, we're going to get a second squared and per meter, or there's a meters per second squared here. Okay? So we multiply so therefore I lambda, the in, the irradiance per unit will say, excuse me, I nu, the irradiance per unit frequency interval is equal to C times the energy density per unit frequency interval. Okay? So there's actually I'm sure I'm sure quantum excuse me, I'm sure quantum mechanics gives us that out directly. But this is just you uh, getting it by looking at dimensional analysis. So now we have we have I suppose DI is the best way to think of that. We have DI, we have the uh, the irradiance or the, the fractional irradiance. Okay, so in order to get the total of irradiance, of course, we must integrate this. So that becomes the total irradiance is the integral of this. Now, something very important. We're going to assume that all of our sources are point sources. That means they're radiating in a sphere. Now, the next phrase we need to use is isotropic. Isotropic means invariant with respect to direction. So that means the, radi the radiation coming out is the same from every direction. So they're all point sources radiating in a sphere isotropically. Now, if you think about it, that means, let's say you, you have your observer over here. No matter where you put your observer, you will always only be able to see the irradiance from half of your point source. So you'll only ever get to see one hemisphere of the irradiance, or half of the total irradiance. So when we start integrating in a moment using spherical coordinates, we're not going to integrate across a sphere, but rather we're going to integrate across a hemisphere. Okay, and that should make perfect sense to you. Okay, so because we can only ever see half of the uh, the actual the we can only ever see half of the radiation which your point source is actually emitting. So we're going to do this in spherical coordinates, which uh, which I've done in the past. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. That means the the irradiance per unit frequency interval is going to be equal from phi to going to two pi. Phi is equal to zero. 
and we're going to have d5. Oh, sorry, <clears throat> I should have, uh, sorry, I have. I did skip one step, I did skip one step. I didn't talk about da. So in my previous video, I, I talked about da for sphere, okay? So what we saw is that, in general, we'll say the in spherical coordinates, the volume element is r squared sine theta um, d phi d theta d r. However, when r is constant, or we're talking about r hat is equal to constant, we talk about an area element. And the area element is going to be equal to uh, r squared times the sine of theta times uh, d phi d theta and then we're going to have an R hat. Okay, so we know that the solid angle is equal to the area S over R squared. So that's just going to be equal to uh, sine theta d phi d theta. Okay, so the actual area element, so it will say dA is going to be equal to sine theta d phi d theta. All right, so let's plug that in and we're going to get the irradiance per unit frequency interval is the integral from phi 0 to 2 pi. We're going to have d phi here. I'm going to do this in another color now, maybe red. We're going to have the next integral, which is theta. But like I said, we're only going on a hemisphere. That's supposed to be a theta. So 0 to, zero to pi over 2 this time. And it's going to be cos theta times sine theta times d theta. And we have this other, we'll say, extra factor, which I'm just going to write in as well, of c times u nu, and we have this factor of 4 pi. Now, this integral here is a half, which makes perfect sense, because we're only going around half of the sphere, so we should only get half of it. So that means we put it all together, the irradiance per unit frequency interval works out as one quarter the energy density per unit frequency interval multiplied by the speed of light. So in order to go from energy density per unit frequency interval to radiance per unit frequency interval, we must divide by a quarter and multiply by C. Okay, now if we look at the units on this, we're going to have joules per meter cubed, that's energy density, meter per second, and per hertz, which is going to be equal to watts per meter squared, uh, per hertz, okay, which is exactly what we wanted. All right, so that is um, that's all I've got to say about photon flux or radiance. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel, and please visit universityphysicstutorials.com.